right, today's video, I'm going to talk about syncing Jobber and QuickBooks. I already recorded this video while I was on the phone with Jobber. So I removed the audio from that video and was able to edit down the parts that are important for you. And then this is now the voiceover that I am recording to it. So you are going to follow along on your screen on your Jobber application. And from here, you are going to start on the left hand side where it says apps. And I'm going to walk you through the process that we did. So from your apps, you are going to find QuickBooks online. And you'll see just for a moment, I could not find QuickBooks, um, but it's going to be over for me. It was on the right hand side, just the green did not stick out like it should have. So make sure you are connecting the correct QuickBooks account um, with the correct jobber. So for example, I'm an accountant. I have access to a lot of different QuickBooks accounts. So verify that. It will ask for permission to communicate between the two apps and you need to give it permission before you can connect to QuickBooks. It's a pretty simple process to sync the two, pretty intuitive. Um, and I like this new sync a lot better than their old sync. Again, if you have multiple accounts, make sure you're selecting the right one. So I found them under my Nexus Financials account. And from here, it's going to ask which things QuickBooks can communicate back to Jobber, and I left on both clients and products and services. So even if those are created in QuickBooks, they communicate back to Jobber. Now you need to select which checking account Jobber already deposits into. If you have a brand new set of QuickBooks and you have not linked your bank account yet, first you need to add your bank account in to QuickBooks. Then you can come to the screen and it should give you an option to select that same checking account and then you go on over. So what will be imported from QuickBooks to Jobber? That is just talking about today. So if you're like, I know I have way more than four clients and one product, it is talking about the day that you are starting this sync. So that's why the number is so, so low. So just on this particular day, there was four new clients added in one product. This process where that actual importing has and the syncing begins it does take a few minutes and I trimmed it down and go ahead to view details because from here we need to edit a few things on the left hand side you'll see the new clients you'll see the new products and services and then you'll see the timestamps that they were all imported from today so that's why there's such a few amount of things being imported, but I'm going to show you how you can go back historically as well. This one did not have any errors or warnings. And to be honest, if it had errors and warnings, I wouldn't know exactly what to tell you, but uh, ideally it does not. So two things here, you have either sync settings or chart of accounts. From here, you have options for what the communication does and when the communication happens between the two softwares. For clients, I am going to have them appear as soon as they are created or updated. Same thing with products and services. The sync setting can be adjusted in the future. So if you switch it to one thing and you decide you want another, you can always go back and adjust um, the settings here. Um, but for invoices, I only want invoices to be uploaded after they are sent. This is because if there's a draft invoice, I don't want that in QuickBooks and matching with the incorrect payment. Um, so I only want the real invoices that were created or updated, not when they are sent. Um, I don't know if that made a lot of sense. Hopefully it does. But payments, refunds, and tips, um, it's when they are collected. And timesheets as well. I'm going to keep those in sync, if, uh, especially helpful if you do... Um, timesheets there. So this is going to be the portion where you can select an older date to pull in information. From here, you can either import invoices or timesheets, um, and then you choose the date on the calendar of when you want it to. For this example, I'm not going to mess with that right now. Um, especially, I would not suggest it if you have already matched in old deposits and invoices historically. I would not pull in those old ones because that's going to duplicate a lot of income. Um, up next, we are going to talk about um, the chart of accounts. So up at the top of the screen near sync settings, we are going to make sure that the communication is happening in the right column. So payments need to fall into the correct banking account. 
job or payment fees should be linked to a merchant fee account and tips should be collected to a tips account. This just makes sure that Jobber is putting the right um, amounts into the correct columns that it should be. So after that, you select update sync and that should be done. Again, this is a lot better than the old sync. I think you'll have a lot more success with it. And if you have any questions, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of if you can find me on the internet and I would be happy to help you out if you have any other questions too. Thank you.